Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now it's time for us to have our first guest. She's a young woman that is being celebrated amongst the 100 young Nigerians that are being recognized this year by the Future Awards Africa Project. Now she's been nominated in the category for Future Awards Africa Prize for Journalism. She's a young woman who runs an investigative journalism bit for the Nation newspaper where she exposes organizations and individuals that partake in activities that are dangerous and harmful to our health and to Nigerians. She also she points the light, or rather she shines the light on poor communities in Nigeria, bringing awareness to them and seeing how well we can be a part of them. She's won several awards. She recently was awarded the Nigerian Academy of Science Awards. She was also a 27 grantee of Impact Africa, and she's won several other prizes. Today, we're talking about her nomination at the Future Awards Africa Prize for Journalism, and her name is Anna Ojo. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, ladies, for having me on the program. Welcome, Anna. Good to yeah. have you. We're actually, you know, we're related in a way. So we are <laughs> siblings in the industry. Yes. So we're kind of related. Have you ever considered doing what I'm doing, though? You know, the interesting thing is, when I was growing up, I wanted to be a broadcaster. I wanted to be on TV. I wanted to do showbiz. Like, you know, it's the dream. But I don't know, somewhere along the line, I just mellowed, so to speak. I just Wh discovered. Why did you say that? I don't know. I don't know. Even then in class when I'm reading textbook, I imagine myself being a newscaster and the rest. Then I discovered writing and I think I am much more suited for that. Really? I'm not sure okay. I have. So maybe we should add. So funny <laughs> enough, you never can tell. You can discover a dream or a new skill at any point in life. So let's find out at the point where you, you figured out that writing was a thing for you. Maybe the opportunities that I had then, because I remember wanting to do an internship at a television station. I didn't get that, so I went to a newspaper. And from there, I discovered, okay, I could write better. I believe I can do the writing aspect better than the talking aspect. Um, I don't really think I'm really fitted for it. It's just now that I think I'm sort of, like, I'm quiet. I don't talk too much. I'm an introvert, and... So it's just like, you know, as you grow up, you discover yourself and you discover what you are best suited to do. So according to your profile, you do investigative journalism. Yes. How does that work? Mm. Of course, it's about being curious. It's about taking the extra step, looking for answers to questions or looking at, looking at issues that affect people that other people or other journalists may not really pay attention to. Because if you look at the media landscape in Nigeria, it's easy to be carried away by news from politics and economy. And then you have the development aspect. You have people, you have issues affecting people in the community. You have, you know, things that affect us as women being the information that people need to be able to hold leadership in the country accountable. So I think doing that is sort of fulfilling for me. It's part of the mandate of what journalism should be. You go into a place where there is silence and not like you make noise, but you just make sure that people get the right information that they need to make the right decision. And you point attention to what is wrong that we need to address so that life can be better for the people. Have you ever gotten to uncover a really dangerous story? We know that recently there was a, the break of the BBC, BBC African Eye story and mm -hmm. the I think it was coding, you know, the menace yeah, the of coding, coding in our society. Story. And we watched that clip and realized how much danger it was involved in uncovering these activities. So I'm wondering if you've ever had to be in such dangerous situations yourself. Yeah, the situation that I had, I won't say it was very dangerous. It was just about me finding courage about when I did a report on Sachi Water in Lagos. And I'm like, we had to name this brand. You know, when you name their brand and you put them out there, there's this fear of backlash. They may come back to you and things like that. But I'm like, if you are doing it and we are not naming the bad guys, you've not really done any report. Because if you are doing a report, people should know. So I would have said that should have been a situation that is sort of dangerous and you're afraid people may come after you. It is dangerous. You. Yes. But, you know, there's something about this job when you feel... There's this gut feeling that sort of gives you the confidence. Um, once you do it, you just want to go on. And then I believe because my face is not out there, it's just my name that is out there. I can just do it and easily get away That's with amazing. it. <laughs> okay, so concerning journalism, there's always been that thought that, you know, journalists don't totally tell the people the truth. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been in a position where you were made to tell half truth or not totally the truth? I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. Yes, I do. Sometimes, yeah. maybe, let me expatiate a bit. Sometimes they'll say maybe on issues concerning national, national security. security, for example. They tell you, oh, you can't let this out. It's going to cause chaos and all of that. 
Have you ever been in such a situation? In the Nigerian media landscape, you know, you have some stories you want to do, especially on issues on national security, that you, you won't even get information. The information you need, they won't open up for you. So in that case, you want to tell a story, but you can't go on because you don't have access, you don't have information. Then there are some... I don't want to go deep into the issues of Nigeria media. I know sometimes you want to do some stories and you have to look at the media landscape, the ownership interests. You can't really touch some aspects. You know, there are restrictions. Yeah. If I'm saying there are no restrictions, I'll be lying. I'm glad that you're actually mentioning this. You know, we're having this conversation. Let's look at the other challenges that journalists like yourself in Nigeria face. Mm -hmm. What are these challenges? The challenge is the number one challenge that we know is the poor pay in the industry and the fact that sometimes salary is not stable and the rest. And I think for me at a point when I was about going into this profession, when I finished youth service, I almost chickened out. Like I was like, I was just going to marketing communication because I was afraid, you know, when you do something, you should be able to... It's your work. You should get rewarded. So, but then you have to look at what you're passionate about and the fact that I had... People, I had mentors who were able to help me, to sponsor me, and so that was why I was able to stick to this profession. So we have to look at the, the poor welfare, the pay, and the fact that in Nigeria, access to information is difficult. You have the FOI hat, which is not still, which, is, which has not been domesticated in some states. So to get information, the danger involved, the fact that journalists don't have insurance, so it limits the kind of stories that you want to do because when you put yourself out there and you put yourself at risk, if anything happens, what happens to your family? Nobody will be there for them. So those are the restrictions that we should be addressing at this moment. And I'm brilliant. I, I'm, I'm really pretty sure that you know your new crop of brilliant young journalists, you know, Nigeria's new tribe. I'm hoping that you would champion this course for other young journalists coming up because we don't want to keep talking about these problems and seeing them year in, year out. We want a young group of people that will come together and say enough is enough. We need to see a change now. Let's talk about the other areas of journalism that you do beyond um, investigative journalism. There are other things that you do, other articles you like to write or you know, tell us about them. Basically, human interest articles, you know, just... Or when I find interesting people that I want to interview and just talk and share their stories, then I really like the woman interest article, like going to a place, like I've done some going to IDP camps in Abuja, in Benue, and just meeting people and see life the way it is and putting their stories out there. What does that do to you? You know, at first when you start, you are so, so emotional then you have to remind yourself that I'm here to do a job because if you get carried away by the emotion, you won't be able to really do what you should do. It just tells me that, you know, there's another world, like there's a different reality. You can't, it's easy for you to stay in Lagos and stay woke and you think, yes, life is fun, life is good, or this is how life is. But getting into their picture and seeing life from another dimension, like people who don't have education or people who used to be so buoyant, like they, they, they're in charge of their life and suddenly there's this disruption, there's a crisis which has sort of disrupted the terrain of their life. Like seeing women, seeing children in need, then you start to ask yourself, if they're in this situation, how do they care for their personal needs? You know, how do they care for personal hygiene? Imagine yourself staying in a place where you don't even bathe for some days because there's no soap or water. And this is the reality this of This is the reality. In and you wonder how do they, the women, do they get to use sanitary pad? How do they cope? Those issues of life that we take for granted. So, all okay. Right. Well, I, I'm going to still ask concerning, you know, journalism in itself. If you were to make recommendations for some of the issues that journalists face in Nigeria, mm -hmm. what are those recommendations you would make to make it better, the profession better, the lives of the professionals involved also better? Because, mm -hmm. of course, you guys desire to do better. I would want to believe that. Of course. The journalists deserve to do better. If a journalist is motivated, they can go all out to get the stories. You see the international big brands, the big names in journalism. You see the kind of stories that they do. But because, of course, there's something to fall back on. But before we even go, of course, there's the issue of welfare. But something else that we need to be mindful of is the training. Journalism school, what are they teaching? This is the digital age. You know, it's not just the TV and the newspaper. Like, getting the future journalists to be ready, the readiness for them to cope in this realm. 
where so you we have need a lot to, to prepare yes, journalists to prepare you know so that you don't have a situation whereby like now you in the country this situation of fake news and the rest because the credible information is not going as far as the some of the information you get from the blog because now you have to look at where are the people getting the information from it's from the internet Very so true. you have to have journalists trained in that aspect the training is important then the welfare is very very important and the training is also important because we want to be able to tell our stories we don't want foreign media coming here coming in and being here, the ones yeah. to break the big stories to... which we've seen happen a few mm -hmm. times but thank you so so much for doing your bits you know contributing to ensuring that you help tell our nigerian story it's a tradition to ask every nominee that comes here what they were doing at the time they got the nomination letter, so the, the nomination email. So in a few seconds, tell us, what were you doing and what was your reaction? Okay, I think it, I got it on a Saturday, and they were like, they were going to announce the next day, and I was like, wow, what was I doing? Possibly uh, Saturdays, I'm in the house, I'm doing shows, or I was on the road, coming back, and I checked my phone, and I saw the letter, and I was like, wow. Did you scream? I did not scream, I was surprised. Oh. You know, sometimes when you are so surprised, because I, I don't know, I've gotten other awards before, but when you're getting something from the youth community, and not just any youth community, like a distinguished brand, yes. you wonder like, wow, so these people have been noticing. <laughs> like Nigerians, we try, we present to you, and our joy is definitely one of them. Thank you so much for sharing your gift and your talent with us. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. And we wish you all the best at the grand finale on the 16th of December at Balmoral Hall Federal Palace Hotel. You get to see who the winners are. All the nominees are winners, first of all. That's mm -hmm. something we must always put out there. Yes. Okay, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank like, you so I'm much. looking forward to the day. Same here. Yeah. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.